Welcome everyone to West Explains Best. Today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on Solve Triangle's Angle Bisector Theorem. We're gonna go ahead and introduce the problem, briefly talk about the Angle Bisector Theorem, and then go on from there, okay? So we have DAC, which is this angle, DAC, and we're comparing that to this angle, BAD bad. And it's asking, what is the length of BD right here? Okay, just a little bit on the Angle Bisector Theorem. This is actually my third time trying to film this tutorial is because I keep trying to cut down the length. I think I want to just make it simple in terms of what is the angle bisector theorem. And if you want further detail on why it works or how to set up proportions, you can go ahead and check out some of my other videos. But if you just want the skinny, okay, how do I do this? That's what I'm here for right now. First off, angle bisector, what does it mean? It's a line that bisects an angle. So here we have angle A and it is bisected by this green line DA, okay? So DA is the angle bisector, and it bisects A into two equal parts, which are labeled as theta, okay? So those are the two angle a equal angles that uh, it is bisected, bi meaning two, okay? That's the long and skinny of it. What does it do for us? Well, it sets up this cool ratio, oops, of where we have, uh, let's use blue, so we have the purple side to the blue side is going to be equal to the proportion of this purple side to this blue side. Notice how we're talking about the purple sides. How do I know to identify those? Because they're touching the angle, okay? They're being formed with the angle bisector uh, and the angle, okay? So that side, the 5.7 and the angle bisector form that angle, and the same thing with the 5.1. The blue sides for both of these... If you take a look, the blue sides for both, they're the sides not touching the angle. They're the side opposite, okay? So what can we do here? We're setting up a proportion. I just want to show you what it is real quick. So we can say CA over DB, okay? So that was the opposite side, and this was the angle side. And here we have the part, top part of the triangle on the left, and we're going to set that equal to, uh, let's see, CA over D, B, uh, D, sorry, that's DC, I messed up. You may have seen that, and I'm actually gonna call it CD. No, I'm gonna call this top one AC. It doesn't make a difference, I'm just kinda being a little picky here. <laughs> and then we have CD here. All right, now, on the, that, so that was the top part of the triangle, top part of the triangle, and then we have the bottom part of the triangle. So that's the top, that's the bottom, just so you're clear. All right, so the bottom part over here. Again, we need to have the angle side on top, okay? If we have the angle side on top on the left side, we have the angle side top on the right. So that's AB, angle side. Angle side, strong side. And then we have DB over here. And actually, I should have it similar. I'm going to call it BD. Doesn't make a difference, but I'm just being picky, like I said, okay? So uh, this, is, this is where we're going to make our money right here. Okay, this proportion. So you can set that proportion up every time and it will work like that, okay? So uh, what am I gonna do here? I'm just gonna fill in values. I know this is 5.1 over 3.2 and that is equal to 5.7 over my question mark, which I'm gonna call X. Very creatively, I'm gonna call it X. So now I just, I need a calculator at this point. I got a lot of decimals that I'm working with. And now I'm just gonna cross multiply and solve for X. So I get, I'm gonna go to red, 5.1 times X equals 5.7 times 3.2. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out, 5.7 times 3.2. Well, that's 5.1 equals 18.24 X. Whoops, no, that's not, that's wrong. 5.1 X, excuse me, 18.24. I'm gonna divide both sides by 5.1. This darn little thing gets in the way. And then I get, Survey says 3.58, round to one decimal place. So I'm gonna keep it like this and I'm gonna round at the end, equals X. Oh, so I'm, I'm at the end, Never mind. So one decimal place is this, so I need to round that up to 3.6. 3.6 equals X, okay? So that's my answer. I'm gonna write that in here in just a second. Now I wanna show you that you can also compare bottom to top I'm sorry, I should do top to bottom. Let's go top to bottom. And then you can put the angle sides on the left and then the opposite sides on the right. 
And what do I mean by that? I can put uh, 5.1 over 5.7. Is 5.1 the top side? Yes, it is. And then I can put 3.2, 3.2 over x, and that will also be, you can cross multiply this and you're gonna get the same thing. So you can set up two different proportions as long as you're being consistent, top to bottom on both sides, or on both sides, and then the angle side and the opposite side on separate part, or angle side on the top, opposite side on the bottom, top on the left, bottom on the right. And you're gonna see as we go along that it's a little bit more clear, so we're gonna 3.6, boom, check, out. next question. All right, here we go. This is gonna be fast now. We have these two angles, here's our angle bisector. So we know that we can do, I'm gonna use the same colors, 6.8 to 3.8 is gonna be the same as 4.6, and we're gonna call that X, okay? Oof, yuck. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, we can go 6.8, I'm just gonna do the same thing we did last time, 3.8, and this is gonna be equal to 4.6 over X. Cross multiply, that's all we're doing here. This is essentially a cross multiplication exercise, 6.8x equals 4.6 times 3.8. And we get 17.48. I need to divide that by 6.8, divide by 6.8 to both sides to solve for x. And I get x equals 2.6, one decimal place. 2.6, went to 3.6 to 2.6. Hopefully that's not our GPA. All right, next question. What is the length of AC? Okay, this time we have our missing guy. I can use this pen. So our missing guy this time is in the purple. And we have 2.8 and 2, okay? So I can do the same thing, 8.1 to 2.8. If you want to set it up the same way each time, that might be a good thing, okay? You don't have to. You could change it up and as long as you're consistent. I, that's what I always say to my students. But you can set this up the same. There's nothing wrong with setting up the same way each time. 8.1 times 2 on the left equals 2.8x. 8.1 times 2 is going to give us 16.2, and that's equal to 2.8x, and I need to divide 16.2 divided by 2.8. And I get that is equal to 5.8 rounded to one decimal place. That's my x right there. 5.8. Okay, so 5.8, we're going to plug it in, boom, check it out. <laughs> question last one same process this time I'm going to show you that it works doing it a little bit differently so I'm gonna go purple whoops purple purple blue blue okay and this time I'm gonna put the blues on top so we're gonna put 3.4 over 6.5 man I'm just being a rebel today and then we have 2.6 over Ooh, I'm gonna put Y ultra rebel so I'm now I'm gonna cross multiply 3.4 times y equals 6.5 times 2.6, and that's 16.9. And I'm gonna divide by 3.4 to get y by itself. 3.4, I'm just double checking that I inputted everything correctly. y equals 4.1 decimal place. Well, it's 4.97, so I need to round up to y equals 5.0, because that's gonna, the nine tells the four to go up one because the seven told the nine to go up one, so it's a double. Seven tells the nine, nine tells the four, 5.0. And that's our answer. And there we go, that's how you do the angle bisector. Hope you learned something today. If you need more practice on the angle bisector theorem or see the root of it, check out some of my other videos. I have some notes videos on that whole chapter. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time.